for passing by this way tonight. Thank you for the assurance of salvation. Thank you for the joy and the peace that overflows our souls tonight. Lord, I just pray, God, that you'd help us. Lord, as we try to study the Word of God tonight, see your face for leadership, guys. Oh, God, I pray, Lord, that you just help us to be stirred. Lord, let that revival fire be rekindled in our hearts and our souls tonight. In the name of Jesus, we'll be exalted. And you'd be lifted up, Father, in this place tonight. Touch us now as we try to sing a congregational song or two. Touch the special singing, God, and get glory to yourself. We'll sure love you and thank you for who you are and for that you do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 When you get back to your seat, just remain standing tonight. Go sing a couple of congregational songs. Amen. Amen.
thankful for the mercy and for the grace of God. Amen. I just want to say this. I, I said this Sunday morning, and uh, the Bible teaches us that the Lord give you the desires of your heart. And uh, I said Sunday morning that I sure would like to see somebody walking old fashioned and I'll get born again. I got to see it last night. Amen. Amen. Three different times. Amen. And uh, just enjoy it. And I've seen it this week. And I have been there for all 86 of them, but I've seen many. I uh, walked the aisle this week and get born again, saved by the grace of God. I'm glad he's still saving old sinners. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for that. Glad he's still reviving churches. Glad he's still on the throne tonight. And uh, glad he still lives and abides within the heart and soul of the believer tonight. Amen. And it is a joy to be saved. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. You pray for the Johnson. They're going to come sing for us. And then we're going to try to give to you what the Lord's laid upon our heart. Amen.
says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To thee which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. <laughs> Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Skip down, if you will, to verse number 23. I was saying that whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, Lord, I want to thank you for loving us. Thank you, Father, for who you are and for that that you do. Lord, I pray, God, as we just try to encourage and challenge the church tonight, God, I pray that you'll speak to our hearts and speak to our souls. God, I pray that you'd get glory and honor to yourself. Father, I pray, God, that we just leave here tonight, Lord, more excited, more enthused about what you're doing and what you're going to do. Lord, what our positions are and what you have for us to do. Father, you get glory to yourself. We'll sure love you and thank you for who you are and for that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may see this. And I want you to look back with me at verse number 24. And notice what your Bible says tonight. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. Now I just want to give you this thought tonight. I'm really, I'm honest, I'm really going to try my best just to teach to you what the Lord has laid on my heart for tonight. All right? This ties off me. I'm not losing it. I'm going to preach or anything. It's just not. I really want to try to just teach to you just a moment uh, tonight or just for a few minutes on what I really feel like the Lord is giving to us, what the Lord is showing us uh, in His Word tonight. I want to, if I could title the, the, the lesson tonight, it would just simply be that not for men's service, but for the Lord. Not for men's service, but for the Lord. Notice what the Bible said there in verse 24. Knowing that of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. And can I say tonight as we look at this and uh, we think about this, we think about our church, and uh, I ask you some questions last week tonight uh, uh, about the church. You know, how many would like to see it grow? And uh, how many would like to see souls saved? And, uh, and, and how many people is just getting involved? And people are excited and uh, people are raising their hands. A few weeks ago on a Sunday morning, I asked you to uh, take that index card and tell me three things that uh, you felt like we could do better or that we were doing uh, wrong or not doing it all. Then three things that, boy, when you think about our church, uh, this is exactly what you think about. Then we went over those last things tonight, and, and uh, I shared it with you. Hey, listen, I'm looking forward that the choir is going to start having choir practice, and uh, people's going to be faithful to the house of God, and we're going to pass out tracts, and we're going to go soul winning again, not just visitation, but soul winning, and uh, people are going to get involved and do their part. What a, what a joy and what a blessing, what excitement that is. But can I say this? That will only last for as long as it's stirred up or it's uh, uh, chanted out or preached about if we only do it for man's service. If we're not doing it as unto the Lord. Now, I understand tonight, I told you this a week or so ago that Boy, if I was preaching in a revival meeting somewhere, I feel like I could really help the church and help the pastor. It's hard for me a lot of times to tell you everything I want to tell you because uh, I am your pastor. And you've got to be uh, real careful. But let me just, if I could say it like this tonight, just to kind of, everybody know where to say I'm not looking for uh, somebody to pad my pockets. I'm not looking for keys to a new car. I'm not looking for somebody to build us a new house. Look, I'm, I'm just really interested in people just getting where they ought to be with the Lord. And God poured out his blessings on them and people just living for him simply because that they love the Lord. You know I've had people, and my wife could attest to this, I've had people honestly over the last 
just over the last few years. It ain't been a long time ago. I just got the, over the last few years. They said, you know what, preacher? I'll be honest with you. The only reason we, we dress like we dress and the only reason we really live like we live is because that's what we thought you wanted us to do. Well, at least for a little while, you've done good. <laughs> but you know why it didn't last? Because it wasn't for the Lord. It wasn't for the Lord. But do you realize tonight, and, and, and I'm not asking you to put yourself in my shoes, I'm not asking that tonight, but, and I, I'm, I, there's no way I could probably put myself into your shoes tonight, but do you realize that over the last 22 years, if there was, was a window or an opportunity that I was looking, or if I was looking for a place to quit, that I've had plenty of windows and opportunities as a pastor to say, you know what, I'm out of here, I'm done, I'm going to quit, but you know what, I wasn't doing it for me, thank God, I wasn't doing it for me. Because if you do it for the Lord, when you see those things happen, you ask yourself something like this. As a pastor, what could I have done better? How could I keep somebody else from falling through that same crack or that same debt? Why? Because you're doing it for the Lord. I don't know how many times the deacons have sat with me. Uh, in meetings, and uh, maybe it was a correction, or maybe it was because that uh, somebody was leaving the church, or uh, sin had called up with somebody, and uh, we sat there as the deacons, and they got to tell the deacons that they're going to step down from their positions, and they're sorry, and they're even going to leave the church, and uh, and uh, we asked the question, hey, what could I have done different as a pastor? What could I have preached if after the church I uh, uh, help different to keep this and you know, at 100% of the time, I've never, you, you, the deacons are sitting here tonight, I've never heard it said any way, other way, but 100% of the time, sitting in that room, here's what's been said. Uh, preacher, we knew the truth, we heard the truth, we ourselves even spoke the truth, but we let the devil get in, and we got out. 100% of the time, that's what's been said. Now, we all sitting here to know, uh, to not know that now when it gets to social media, uh, it's a different story. Come on, brother. But sitting there amongst the godly council that they've been with before, that's helped lead the church before, uh, 100% of the time, uh, they said we knew what was right, we knew the truth, but we let the devil in, we chose to listen. Uh, we simply did not heed to the word of God. You know why? Uh, they were doing it for men, sir. Yes, sir. To please man. Now, don't get me wrong tonight. I, I sure don't want to be a preacher that loves the Lord and wants to do it for the Lord and just wants to see how many people I can upset along the way. I mean, I want to make the church happy. But can I say this? If the church gets unhappy, I better make sure God's happy. Amen. I mean, uh, I think it's safe to say this tonight. This doesn't mean that it's ugly, but do you realize there's been some stands sometimes that maybe my wife didn't even understand. Uh, maybe myself, when God said, let's do it this way, I didn't even understand that. But you do those things because it's right and because it's Bible and it's the direction of the Lord. Do you find anywhere in the scriptures when you get over there to Genesis chapter number 22 that when the Lord told Abraham to go sacrifice Isaac, they said, whoa, I've been waiting on this. How about when he said, no, I want you to build them all. And I mean, no, you can, here's how big it's going to be. And they persecuted him and they laughed and they mocked him. No, and the Lord said, man, I love this persecution. Yes, sir. What about Elijah after I mean, he called fire and ran out of heaven? And, and he saw the Lord do mighty great things. Then old Jezebel said, we're going to have his head. Elijah didn't say, man. Well, I wish I could be heard in a dark alley somewhere. Oh, he ran for his life. Yes, sir. Amen. If we're not careful, listen, God's allowed us to see tremendous things. God's allowed us to do great things. And, uh, matter of fact, and I hope this sounds, I mean, I hope it excites you tonight. Uh, somebody was talking about these great moves of God that we're seeing and that we're hearing about. And, boy, aren't you glad that, it, I mean, listen, I understand it was eight years ago or nine years ago. But, boy, aren't you glad that in 2013, uh, on a Sunday morning service, just a normal Sunday morning service, uh, that that same Holy Ghost that's doing it again, uh, sat down on this very place here uh, and sent us a revival. Uh, I think that with 11 days. 14 people got saved and the last one in was a Catholic I said to God we need the glory it's not like that every single Sunday but preacher why do you keep preaching why do we keep singing why do we keep teaching because we're doing it for the Lord Amen. not for man you're doing it for the 
And everyone that said they got saved, they ain't even really got saved. Everyone that said they was a preacher, they ain't really been a preacher. Everyone that said they was right with God, they ain't always been right with God. Matter of fact, everybody in the student said they love the church, love the pastor, and, and was going to stand with the church and pastor. No oh, lie. <laughs> they ain't all about that. But why do we keep doing what we're doing? Because we're not doing it for man, sir. Amen. We're doing it for the Lord. Can I say this tonight, just in an example? If you read your Bible because you only feel like that's what you're supposed to do, you probably won't receive a lot from it. If you only pray because you think the pastor expects you to pray, you probably won't get a lot from it. If you only come to church because you know the pastor's looking to see if you come to church, you probably won't get much out of it while you're there. If you're only faithful because you think others are watching to see if you're faithful, it's not pleasing unto the Lord. Amen. But we do those things because we love the Lord. Probably one of the greatest things I love about our church and our Sunday school program is this. I realized after Sunday morning meeting with the teachers, I, I was told they were glad we did it, and I'm thankful that we did it, but there's a lot of things I learned Sunday morning. I got to work on it. I need to help our Sunday school department. There's some things we need to, I mean, just make it better. I, boy, there's nothing wrong with good, but have them just like better, especially when it's for the Lord. Amen. I, love, I love church. I like it when it's bad. I, I, I like spiritual service. I like it when they're real spiritual. I'll just be honest with you. I'm kind of jealous. I want the Lord to do something. Amen. Boy, when he's doing it, I'll just be honest with you. I don't really care where it's going on. I, we travel, uh, what is it, 30 minutes, 31 minutes. I think my driveway to Calvary is in Union Grove's parking lot. 31 minutes. I've traveled, I don't know how many times, at least five. In the last week, why? Because I just want to see what the Lord is doing. I just want to get in on it. I never imagined uh, until Monday night when I got ready to leave that the priest would ask me uh, uh, to come and pray. I wasn't going to preach. Uh, I was going to see revival. Uh, just wanted to see the move of God. Uh, and to be honest with you, last night, uh, when I walked through those doors, if the choir was sung uh, and people got saved and nobody got to pray, I would be just as happy as I am right now. It would have me, I scared to death. But why do we do what we do? Because it is the Lord. Notice this tonight. I want you to see the, the word of God in verses 15 through 17. Notice this. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to thee which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Boy, you know what that's teaching us tonight? Don't get over the fact that you've been saved by the grace of God. Don't get over the fact you've been called into the body of Christ. You know what the Bible said? Be ye faithful. Boy, if we're not careful, we're some of the most uh, uh, negative and, 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 and bad mouth. I remember we find everything wrong we find wrong. We ought to be thankful uh, that we're saved by the grace of God. Amen. That don't have anything to do tonight with wanting the house of God to look better. It doesn't do any, it doesn't have any, it doesn't even see anything wrong tonight with us wanting to be able to welcome people to the house of the Lord. Hey, listen, we want to make our visitation program better, our witnessing program better, our soul winning better. We want to make Sunday school better. We want to make the choir better. Why? Because we're doing it for the Lord. Amen. I, I'll be honest with you. This is where, this is where people kind of get a little disturbed. Back when I was younger, and the Lord, it's been several years now um, since I had a speeding ticket. Now, if you want to know what a recent one like, probably talk to my sister, but uh, it's, been, it's been a while. And boy, I could not wait, Brother Bruce, so I could get past that three-year mark that when I did get pulled over, and he said, hey, how's your driving record? I say, it's clean. You know, you got to go through that three-year purging stage before you can say that. And I just, it's clean. I, it, it, well, let's not talk about past in three years. We don't want to under the blood. Amen. It's a gift. But here's what I'm trying to say now. I remember the first time, I mean, this was, this is before Daddy said, you can hire a law. This is when he said, we're going to go down to the courthouse. We're going to sit there all day. They call you a name. Here. Y'all think that's something else we can do? I remember going down there, Bruce, 
have to walk up there in front of everybody and stand and look at that judge. And I, and I listen, if, if, if it's just, I didn't go up there with my shirt tail hanging out, looks like I just got it out of the washing machine. And walk up there with my hat turned backwards or sideways and look at him and say, Hey, do him, judge. I was respectful. Yes, when he called my name, I said, yes, sir. Yeah, sir. I didn't know who he was, but I knew he was a sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. He asked me a question. I replied, yes, sir. Yeah. So you going to act like that again? No, sir. I was going to act like that anyway. His, his thoughts were not the same thing. <laughs> I took the blame for him. He said, sir, would you go in that fast? I said, oh, I, I, here's what I said. I said, judge, I didn't think so, but I did not. I did not argue with the officer. You know what that officer said? After I got done, he looked over at that officer and he said, whatever the officer's name was, he called him that, so and so officer, do you agree with the testimony of Mr. Cardwell? He said, I agree. Very respectful young man. Woo! I didn't act like I wanted to. He pulled me up. You know why I've done a whole lot that day? I've done it for me. Because I didn't want to kill him. Yes, sir. That I really owe. Right. I've done that for man. You want me to tell you how I know I've done it for man? Because the next time I was running five minutes behind, I speed him again. Yes, sir. Amen. I was doing it again. You know what? A lot of times we act like we act and we lose our excitement and we lose our joy. We're doing it to the wrong way. If we, if we talk this way here and we talk that way out there, who are you doing it for? And listen, I mean, I, now, I mean, when I go play pickleball, I don't wear my suit. But I don't wear anything you'd be embarrassed to call me back. Oh, my, here we go. <laughs> if I wouldn't wear anything that you'd be ashamed to say, hey, that's my pastor and his wife right on the back. Then if we do it for the Lord, you ought not be afraid for me to say, that's one of my members. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. Right. They, they, they go to our church. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'll never forget this. I don't even know how many years ago this has been. Brother Mike, me and Mike was out playing golf one day. Brother Mike said, Brother, it's hot out here. Don't you wear shorts? I said, Brother, if I wore shorts, you'd hit every ball you had in the water. <laughs> I said, my legs is wider than your head. <laughs> I, said, well, I said, I said, brother, I said, I am so fast. I said, I can cut the lights off in my bedroom and still be under the covers when it gets dark. I said, why am I that dark? I mean, you think your Bible page is white. You ain't seen them out of here. And he said, so you really wear pants all your own? I said, I sure do. I said, brother, what you're wearing, you look respectful, it don't bother me a bit. It doesn't bother me one bit. I'm not tempted when I see you on the <laughs> It don't bother me. But you know what? I don't come to the pulpit and preach that. You know why? Because my Bible don't say that a man has to wear pants all year round. My Bible don't say, do you know why I do that? That's just a personal condition. And I think here's what's happening. We got up the pulpit and we've heard men preach up the pulpit. Oh, yeah. man and water to the pulpit. Wait, let me finish first. And he wants to harp on somebody that smoked a cigarette. Right. And he didn't know when to push away from the table. Right. Right. Now there's a difference in having a physical problem and having a problem you do yourself. Amen. 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 Here's what's happened. We got up we took our Bibles and we laid them over here on the side and we preached every thought of our own mind and every conviction of our own self. And, and the reason people ain't in it for the Lord today is because we're not preaching God's Word. Amen. And Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Outside of this, I don't have anything to preach tonight. The message is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And there's many other reasons. Doing the land service. See the gospel. I mean, listen. Yes, I know the pastor is to encourage you. The pastor is to challenge you. Uh, to do something. But can I say, I hope that whoever helped clean that bus up, I hope the Lord pulls the bucket of blessing out on them because we're going to ride down the road Friday and it's going to say Charity Hill Baptist Church on it and the back of it says pick up those Jesus died for or Jesus saves across the back. I hope when people see that, they say, man, I wonder, I wonder where that church is. Thurman, I'm going to look that up. Hey, if they keep that bus clean like that, hey, that church is probably clean. They may be clean people going to church there. I want to be a part of something like that. Amen. Amen. I mean, I just want the Lord to support People that get here just a few minutes.
deserved it just to beat you here so they could put a smile on their face and stick their hand out and say, good to see you tonight. Welcome to Cherry Hill, man. I hope the Lord, I'm telling you, I hope the Lord pours a blessing out on you just for getting excited. I told Miss Scott, I said, Scott, thank you so much. That's beautiful. That's that's amazing. Somebody else said, Scott, where have you been? Hey, that's great. I just mentioned this last week. I'll be honest with you. If it had been just up to the pastor, we'd have probably gone in the second week of April. <laughs> but I mentioned it last week. See, like, I'm just being honest. Bless the Lord. I mentioned it last week. We got a week ahead of time. That means somebody that we wanted to invite for the first service, the youth day, they're going to have one of these a week ahead of time. Amen. Boy, ain't that good stuff. Amen. You know what? Maybe the pastor did do the challenge. I believe with all my heart to do it that quick. Somebody had to do it for the Lord. Amen. Somebody had to do it because they love the Lord. Amen. Notice this. I mean, I know simple to watch it. Look at verse 6. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Boy, don't it make, I mean, don't it make your home, your car, your job place, the house of God, doesn't it make a better place when you look for something you can compliment each other on instead of nitpicking each other back to We made up this in our house years, long, long time ago. And whenever the players wanted to say something that it ought not say, like, I wanted to talk about Hold up, I'm just using this for now. I've been picked on him, so if I just keep picking on him, I'm going to hurt If I wanted to say, boy, brother Mike Stewart, boy, hey, he a tail bearer. I'd start to say something, I'd say, boy, Mike Stewart. He's got pretty hair, don't he? <laughs> you know what we've done? We kept ourselves out of trouble. Well, oh, wouldn't it be good tonight if we took notice of everybody sitting in here that we all have faults and things? I mean, if we'd be honest tonight, I could give another invitation right now and say, boy, if there's anything in that word, just the scriptures we read tonight, that you know you've done it to please man instead of please God. I believe if we were sensitive to the Holy Ghost, we'd fill up the altar again. Because there's been times in our walk with Christ that that's the only reason we did it. Was that man would be pleased. We didn't do it for the right reason. We didn't do it simply because we just didn't love the Lord. We done it because we wanted man to be pleased. I'll never forget what John Dorsey said. It's, it's, it's hilarious, but it's true. He said, uh, I, drove, I drive by this church all the time. And he said, you know, the front the front porch is about a four before. It would probably take three spots for the room to get it clean. But the person that sweeps that porch, it takes them 30 minutes. Because every time a car drives by, they prop up on the broom and they wait. They want somebody to know they swept the porch. <laughs> I, I, I hope I can say this, Brother Mark. I mean, I'm going to say it, but I don't want to say anything. I'm just trying to do <laughs> I can't tell you the last time that we had bad weather. And I had to call Marty Shores or Bobby Shores to say, Can you mean to take care of that parking lot? I'm out of call and I said, Marty, what's the weather like over there? The preacher's bad. I haven't been to the church yet, but I'll drive by there a little while and I'll check it out and I'll call. You think he's doing that for the pastor? I believe he loves me. But I believe he's doing it for the Lord. Because he wants God's people to build a car. He said, Preacher, that's silly. That's silly. No. That's why the Spirit of God moves in the places. Because people do it for the glory of God. Let me say this. I've never had to call Tony Wood or Jerry Sumner and say, Hey, you boys still, y'all still going to be welcoming us here today? I've never had to call them and say, Hey, look, if somebody pulls up in this train, I'll be out there and help them get in. Not one, not, not, not one, not one, not one time. I've never had to call Mark Akers and say, Hey, Mark. Are you, are you running the sound room tonight? Not one time. So let me ask you something. Should I have to say, are you singing in the choir this week? 
verses 15 through 17, then notice this. In verses 23 through 24, we'll see the work of man. There is a work for you and I to do. I want you to hold on to Ephesians chapter number 2, that it's not by works. Let's get man's book. You work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. What that means is you don't work for salvation. But once you get saved, you'll work for the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. Your own salvation. But notice this. The Bible said in verse 23, Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men. Here's what it is now. The work of man needs to be more hearted. Put your heart into it. Do it because you love the Lord. Put your heart into it. Knowing that I'm the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. You're doing it for the Lord Jesus Christ. He that saved your soul. That's what you're doing it for. Now let me ask you this. I mean, I know sometimes, don't think I'm Christian. I know sometimes I pray and I study and, uh, and, and, and sit in the face of the Lord. And man, I come to church and I'm so excited. I can't hardly wait to get to free. I'm so excited. Y'all get to sing and get to testify and I don't even get to pray. <laughs> the Lord showed up. Yes, sir. And I don't, I don't remember one time that I left. Thank you. I cannot believe that he let me do I cannot believe it. How dare them testify to a 12 o'clock? You know why? Because he didn't know. They don't have to get right here. Y'all help me tiptoe real carefully. There's been a time ago I had to cut it off. Because it wasn't on. Spirit for witness. There's been times that, boy, I mean, it was just, man, it was fun, it was good. And all of a sudden, it's why it's very, very serious. And, 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 and we ought to honor Christ in our words <laughs> and in our deeds. Now, tonight, boy, the church said something the other night, going to church. Or maybe coming home, I don't remember. She was just, she was just talking to the car. This is our family. But I thought it was worth sharing with you tonight. She said, you know what? The Lord ought to have to make your heart feel like it's going to beat out of your throat. Or you want to stand up and say, hey, I, I didn't come here to brag on the devil. I didn't come here to tell you how bad my day's been. So here's what Cherry said. The Lord ought to have to make your heart beat out of your throat for you to stand up and say, hey, I just want to. I just want to thank the Lord for saving me. Hey. I just want to thank the Lord for being so good to me. Hey. And I love it. Hey. Sit back right down. If you've never taken time to read this, you want to go read it. Brother Pope said this the other night. And several years ago, I read this, this story about the, about the revival that took place in Wales. And if I'm not mistaken, there's a 13-year-old girl stood up in a church service. Not a Baptist church. Not an independent Baptist church. 13 years old, she stood up. She said, I just want to say that I, I love the Lord. And she sat down. And 150,000 people came to know the Lord as a personal Savior. That revival spread throughout that land and throughout that country. And it just didn't happen in that church. It began to happen as a wave. 150,000 people. Because a 13 year old girl just stood up. She said, I just want to say, I love the Lord. Y'all ain't you know, this and that. It ain't about you. Amen. It ain't about me. Amen. It's about Him. Amen. And could we not all take at least 30 seconds and, and just worship with sis and the songs she was singing? Boy, God sure has been good to me. Well, if I, if I don't ever say anything else, let me just say this. God sure has been good. I don't deserve it. I'll never be able to earn it. I can't buy it. My name ain't given it in itself. God has been good to me. Amen. Let me say this. I'm done right here. Knowing that of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. Hey, listen, here's all I want to say, church. Do it because you love the Lord. Just do it 
because you love the Lord. Hey, preacher, I thought that's what you wanted me to do. If it's Bible, I do. If I hear it, I, I, I do. I want you to do it first of all because you love the Lord. Hey, Amen. I want you to do it because you love the Lord. Hey, Amen. Because you love the Lord. You know why I want to preach? Because I love him. Why do I love him? Because he first loved me. He first loved me. Hey, Amen. He first loved me. He first loved you. He first loved me. While you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. Amen. Amen. Boy, ain't God good tonight? Amen. Amen. Father, we love you, Lord. We thank you for your precious word. Thank you, Father, for challenging and encouraging our hearts. God, I pray, Father, we take the word of God and apply it to our hearts, apply it to our lives. Father, may you get glory. Lord, I pray, God, that you help each one of us to be a better witness and a better soul for you. Father, I pray we take these flyers and these tracks. Lord, we pass them out, Father, to as many people as we can get our get our hand, get them in their hands, Father. I pray. Lord, I pray honest. I pray tonight we'd have to order more. Because people are that excited, that enthused. Lord, about seeing people get right with God and seeing people get saved. Father, thank you for the, the, the way that the church has stepped up, Father. And the Lord just took positions and, and, and took upon themselves, Father, to do things to better the work of Christ and the work of charity. We'll glad this church for the glory of God. Lord, I pray we'll take this word tonight. Father, we'll apply it to our lives. Father, you'll get glory and honor. We'll sure love you and thank you for that you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Boy, God, good tonight. Amen. 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 Amen.